Hi, I'm Josh McGrath. I'm the Soil Management Extension Specialist at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about selecting a lime material. And specifically, I'm going to talk about these alternatives to ag lime. There's a few of them out there, and the questions keep popping up. Can I use Pell or Liquid Lime or this other product that's on the market and only put down five pounds per acre instead of four tons per acre? Let's dive into it. So what is pelletized lime? It's made by granulating uh, finely ground ag lime. So we take usually a very high quality lime product, a more expensive lime product, and it's what we call a value added product. So we're actually adding a little bit of cost by grinding that product down, and then we're gluing it together, typically with some sort of lignous sulfate. And since it's a high quality lime, it's gonna be a higher cost. Also, there's more handling, and there's the glue, and there's the compression, so all of that is gonna run the cost up per ton on this product. Since it has many fines and it has a higher CEC, is it faster than ag lime? Well, not necessarily because that glue has to break down. But nonetheless, it is still a pretty high quality, high RNV product. But at the end of the day, the RNV is still the RNV. And so if it has an RNV of 100% and your uh, soil test calls for two tons of pure lime per acre, then that 100% RNV pelletized lime, it's, uh, you're going to put it out two tons per acre. And this is the question I get quite frequently where people say, hey, look, if I buy this Pell Lime, can I go down to these super low rates? So I, only, I only need 500 pounds per acre instead of 2,000 pounds per acre. And that's simply not the case. You still have to follow the RNV and your lime recommendation. But that doesn't mean there aren't benefits to, to Pell Lime or pelleted Lime. It does uh, allow you to spread it with a regular fertilizer spreader because it's, it's pelleted, it's easier to handle. Uh, you can buy it bagged for small areas. Uh, you can get it on pallets and so forth instead of having it in a big sloppy wet mess in the back of a dump truck. Um, and so people that are farming smaller areas or have limited equipment capabilities, Pell Line provides some value. Um, you know, the, you might get a more uniform application as well, but generally uh, the higher cost doesn't pay for itself when you're talking about broad crop acres. So what's liquid lime? I get uh, questions about this quite frequently. Uh, sometimes it's people that have sprayers and they have fields that are hard to get to. And so that equipment concern makes the liquid lime perhaps a better choice. Or maybe their pH is almost perfect and they just need a little bit for a high value crop. So again, this is going to be a more expensive product. So you have to look at dollars per acre and, and can you justify that cost? It's a really high quality, high solubility lime that's been dissolved in water. Typically, it's about a 50-50 mix of this solid dry product, this lime, mixed into the water. So when you go out and apply it to the field, half of what you're applying is water and half is lime. Now, is it magic? No. You still have to meet the RNV requirement of that field based on your soil test. If your soil test says that you need a one ton or two ton per acre of lime, then you're gonna have to apply twice as, that, uh, as much mass as that with the liquid lime because it's half water. You can't go out there with 50 gallons per acre and expect to have a long-term change. Because it's already dissolved in water, that's another concern. If you put a little, really low rate of liquid lime out, you may see a really quick bounce up in pH, but it's going to bounce back down just as quickly because it's not going to be very long-lasting. Remember with that low-quality ag lime product, quote-unquote low quality, you have all these coarse particles that break down over a long time and kind of provide a slow-release pH modification. So the liquid lime has its place, but you're going to be putting a lot of material out to meet most ag lime uh, recommendations. So what about calcium chloride? Now you may have heard calcium chloride. You may know what that is, right? We use it for tractor tire ballast or road saw. Uh, some high purity uh, calcium chloride formulations are actually used as a foliar fer fertilizer and high value uh, fruit and vegetable crops in certain situations like apples. Okay, but here in Kentucky recently, and quite oftenly I uh, see it on Craigslist, but I, I tell you, I get a, maybe one call a week or email asking about this product. So there's a lot of promotion of it out there. And, and some of the claims are pretty spurious. And so they say liquid calcium presents growers with an alternative solution to lime application, or calcium neutralizes soil acidity. Ag lime tends to be insoluble. It can take years to be effective. Now let's talk about these claims for a second. So there's a little bit of controversy surrounding these claims. We wrote an article uh, that's available at the University of Kentucky Grain Crops blog. You can go and look it up about alternative liming products. 
and we covered this product because we get so many questions about it. And the folks that sell this product uh, kind of hammered that article and put a bunch of comments on the website and said it was terrible research and a terrible article and that uh, we don't have data to support our claims. And none of that is true. Let's talk about the science uh, that's involved in determining whether or not calcium chloride is an alternative line product. There's no controversy here, it's just science, and it's really well-established science. This science goes back to kind of basic chemistry that was developed in the 19th century. So liquid calcium presents growers with an alternative solution to lime applications, and calcium neutralizes soil acidity. As we learned in another presentation, it's the oxide, hydroxide, carbonate, or silicate in lime that removes hydrogen ions and raises the soil pH. Calcium chloride, doesn't have an oxide, hydroxide, carbonate, or silicate. The anion is chloride. The cation is calcium. If that, when that disassociates, if that chloride could bond with the hydrogen in the soil, it would actually form hydrochloric acid. It doesn't because that reaction would take a lot of energy to progress. And so when it disassociates, it actually stays as an ion salt pair in the soil. It's a salt, calcium chloride. So, Looking to refresh our memory on that uh, lime reaction in the soil, lime is calcium carbonate, it dissolves in the soil water, and that hydroxyl group that's formed takes a hydrogen ion and forms water. That's how lime works. Again, if calcium chloride did the same thing, there was enough energy in the system, you would form hydrochloric acid. So what about their claim about solubility and calcium chloride being much more soluble than ag lime? Well, calcium chloride is more soluble than ag lime. It's not going to help you with your soil pH, but it will dissolve quicker. But let's talk about that kind of throwing a little shade on ag lime. Uh, their calcium chloride product is 10% calcium according to the website, and they recommend an application rate of 2 to 5 gallons per acre. That's 2.2 to 5.5 pounds per acre of calcium. There's 800 pounds of calcium in a ton of calcitic lime, assuming that it's got a CCE of 100%. So even the lowest grade ag lime, let's say 50% CCE, will still have a couple hundred pounds of available calcium in the first year. So if calcium is your concern and not raising soil pH, your cheap ag lime is still gonna provide way more calcium than two to five gallons of calcium chloride per acre. So in summary, there are some legit alternatives to ag lime, pelletized lime, liquid lime, some of the things like quick lime and, and so forth. But uh, with these products, even though they're legitimate, you've got to be suspicious of the claims of extremely low rates because the uh, chemistry is just math, that you need a certain number of pounds of that anion, whether it's oxide, hydroxide, silicate, or carbonate, to remove so many pounds of hydrogen from the soil solution and raise the soil pH. So you still need to satisfy that math requirement. Look at the dollars per acre and the RNV of a material and then also think about your crop rotation. These calcium chloride products that are being sold very aggressively in Kentucky, they do not provide any live value, so steer clear of them.